Hey Derek, how's it going man? Good, how you doing? Pretty good sir. Awesome. You got your hearing aid in right now? Yes sir, I do. Go ahead and take it out for me. The human ear is an amazing organ, but a delicate one. As of 2012, up to 40 million adults in the United States have been diagnosed with some form of noise-induced hearing loss. I treat hearing loss, and I see the ill effects of hearing loss every day with my patients. You know, once somebody's exposed to loud sound and they've damaged their hearing, you know, whether it be gunshots or other types of uh, loud uh, impulse sound, that cochlea becomes damaged and it's irreversible damage. A sound is simply energy pumping towards the listener through the air with pressure variation. The louder the sound, the more pressure there is. The intensity of sound is objective, something we can easily measure and agree on. This is our quarter inch microphone that we use for sound testing. It's set up 1.6 meters off the ground and at the exact same height but one meter away we have a reference point for shooting. MIL standard 1474D is the military standard for measuring sound. It is used to test the sound levels of suppressors as well. It states that a microphone is to be placed one meter to the left and level with the muzzle with the microphone oriented in an upward position. The microphone is placed 1.6 meters off the ground. So once this is all set up and ready to shoot, basically go over to our computer and start our sound testing software which captures and calculates things automatically for us. Decibels are not a linear scale, they are logarithmic. This means that for every 10 decibels, the perceived loudness doubles. For instance, a whisper measures around 30 decibels, while an unsuppressed gunshot from an M16A2 rifle reaches beyond 160 decibels. Suppressors can be used to greatly reduce the decibel level of a rifle. Unsuppressed, the rifle exceeds 160 decibels, but when a suppressor is attached, it reduces the decibel level down to the 130 range. When dealing with impulse noises such as gunshots, 140 decibels is where OSHA has set the threshold for when permanent hearing damage occurs. One thing that I see as an audiologist that I've seen over and over and over again, and many of us have, is people come in and tell us that they like to go hunting. A lot of audiologists turn a blind eye to that and say, well, you know, wear earplugs, which is unrealistic, and the person knows that, or do what you want, but I'm gonna kinda just forget about anything else. I don't really like that. I don't think that's acceptable. I think there's a third option that's a very viable option. It's in incredibly well balanced. Being able to suppress a gun will allow the person to enjoy that activity. And as an audiologist, that's a form of hearing protection. When we think hearing protection, we think of um, the foam circus peanuts, we think of earmuffs, maybe electronic hearing protection, but a suppressor is hearing protection. It's just not in your ears. The noise reduction rating is a value representing the number of decibels that a user can expect to reduce while using the hearing protection device. However, these numbers are gathered in a lab environment. Studies show that during real-world use, noise reduction ratings for non-foam earplugs only achieve about 25% of the labeled values. Foam provides about 40% and earmuffs about 60%. When using in-the-ear or over-the-ear hearing protection, the user mutes everything including the environment around them. A suppressor reduces the source of the noise, which allows all other sounds to still be heard. So if we can reduce the gun, the noisy thing, by 20 or 30 decibels, and then keep everything else in the environment the same, that just makes more sense. I would much rather write a prescription for a suppressor than for a set of hearing aids.